Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, kunichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, mahaba, moni moli wanji, namaste, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jen Lee and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedsville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so very delighted and so very grateful that you are joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Colleen Paff. She's here to celebrate the great stink, how Joseph Bazujet solved London's poop pollution problem. Before we invite Colleen in to tell us how Joseph solved that stinky problem in London, we want to invite you to connect with us on social media. Facebook.com slash Reading With Your Kids at Reading With Your Kids on Instagram. We have a great page on Pinterest. It's called Reading With Your Kids. And if you want to connect with us on Twitter, it's at Jedly Magic. And of course, we would love for you to sign up for our free newsletter. All you need to do is to go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, to sign up. You can also go to readingwithyourkids.com and click on the contact button and send us an email. We'd love to hear from our listeners. Join us right now from New York City. Our guest today is here to talk about a really stinky problem. Uh, the name of her nonfiction picture book is The Great Stink, How Joseph Bazalgett Solved London's Poop Pollution Problem. Please welcome to the show, Colleen Paff. Hey, Colleen, how are you? Hey, Jez, I'm good. It's so nice to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to have you on, and I'm really excited to talk about this book. I guess the first thing we should establish is what kind of problem was London having with poop? <laughs> they were having a really big problem with poop. So um, they they didn't have a proper sewer system until it started to be built in the late 1850s, early 1860s. And um, pri- so, like, prior to the, the regular, the real sewer being built, all of the water that came into the city went into the river. So the Thames was basically their de facto sewer. And once they started getting toilets and people started hooking up their toilets to what was the sewer, but what really was just leading to the river, it led to a really big problem. So London wasn't as big as it is now, but back then London had a lot of people in it. And so those lot, the, those people were making a lot of poop and you had to put it somewhere. Yes. And they were basically sticking yes. it in yes. the river? Uh, yeah, it was all going into the river. And you actually might think that toilets would have been a good thing, but they in fact made the problem much worse. Because there was so much water, so much more liquid, and it had to go somewhere. So people started connecting their sewers or their toilets to the sewers, which ultimately led to the river. And um, it it just created a really huge stench in the summer of 1858 with this heat wave and then all the uh, human waste in the river, and eventually the smell got so bad that it finally jolted Parliament into action. People had been trying to get a proper sewer built for many years, but Parliament kept on saying, no, we can't afford it, it's too expensive. And then finally, when the Great Stink happened in 1858, and the river was literally right outside their window, they they quickly voted to um to fork over the money to build the proper sewers. Yeah. Boy, you know, one of the things, you know, here in most cities, you know, we're connected to a source system and you go and you make your deposit and you flush and you don't think anything about it. It's like <laughs> magically whisks away. But it yes, has to go yeah. somewhere. And um so thankfully now we have different systems to, to treat this, and we can talk a little bit about that, but uh, they didn't have anything. I, you know, I, 
I was going to say, why didn't they think of this? Why did, why, why, why couldn't someone have thought, hey, we got a couple hundred thousand people here, and pretty soon this is going to pile up and going to be a problem. But I guess until, you know, the smell hits you in the face, it, it, it's not a problem. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Or it's not your problem. It's not my. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so we have this problem. It's it's the the, the heat wave. The summer finally. Uh, the parliament gets together. They get off their duff and they vote to do something. Uh, that's when they ask Joseph to join in. Yes. Yeah, so so he was the head of the Metropolitan Board of Works. He was the lead engineer. And he actually had been designing a sewer system for many years prior to this. And so he already had a plan. And when um, when Parliament finally gave him the OK, he was pretty much ready to go. They, they didn't start building for another couple of years. But, you know, his plan was ready so he he really it was a, a really huge undertaking because London was already like you said a big city with lots of people lots of buildings and to he 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 really had to try to to dig up the city with um, the least amount of I don't know pain and suffering <laughs> for the citizens and it was a it was a big job. That's one of the reasons why they made the embankments. Um, if you've been to London, you know, the Victoria Embankment, the Albert Embankment, um, the sewers and the subways are underneath those embankments. So he basically created extra land so that he could put the sewers underneath this extra land so he wouldn't have to dig up even more city streets. Wow. Wow. So Joseph had, he was a uh, kind of a visionary or maybe a smellinary. He knew that this was going to be a problem. <laughs> yes, but actually even he, so at the, so at this time, a lot of people were dying of cholera. They kept on having these cholera epidemics, but, um, and they thought that people were dying of cholera because of the smell. So that was one of the reasons why they, you know, when the smell got so bad, they finally were like, all right, we have to do something about this. But, um, and even Joseph thought that it was the miasmas or the smell that was causing the cholera, but it just so happened, you know, of course it was the water, the polluted water that was causing it. And so by separating the sewage from the water, he, he ended up saving thousands of lives because it stopped the cholera epidemics. The last cholera epidemic that they had was in a part of London that hadn't been connected to the sewers yet. And um, so that was one of the things that finally made people start saying, oh, yeah, maybe maybe there is something to this whole, you know, water thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, the, again, so we we take this for granted. Most folks in, in the states and now in, in the United Kingdom and uh, most of what is called the developed uh, world, but there are still people around the world who don't have access to clean water and they don't have access to you know uh, proper or the type of sewer systems that that we have that protect us. Yes, that's true. And millions of people, a lot of children actually are still dying every year from cholera. But one of the things that I learned when I was doing my research for this book is that even in the United States and even still in London and in, you know, like you said, the developed world, we still have billions and billions of gallons of sewage that goes into our waterways every year. I had no idea. Hmm. But, um, Especially on the East Coast, like, for example, I'm in New York right now, and I was just reading that um, they've got 460 outfalls, or like their sewer outfalls that go into the rivers, you know, like the bay around um, Manhattan. And um, billions, <laughs> billions of gallons of sewage go into the um, waterways every year. They're, they're trying to stop it. But it costs a lot of money. So their sewer system is called a combined sewer system. So what happens is when it rains, when they get heavy rain, the um, the rainwater, it combines with the sewage and the overflow goes into the waterways. 
So if, if you live in an area that has a combined sewer system, every time you get a heavy rain, your waterways have raw sewage in them. And in fact, um, uh, doc, there was a study that was done, and um, doctors say that there are more gastrointestinal um, issues after heavy rains. You know, people come in with earaches or stomach aches, and they think it's because maybe they've been in the water mm-hmm. or around the water, and they're picking up the bacteria that's coming from the polluted water. <laughs> wow. Very, Wow. Very that, gross. <laughs> yeah, it is it is really gross. And 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 it's something that we, you know, we, anytime anytime I talk about poop, I laugh about it. It's you know, and kids love to to hear it and I'm imagining sitting down and reading the great stink how Joseph Basil Jet <laughs> solved London's poop pollution problem will be a lot of fun for families, but it really brings up uh, a serious issue that as as you mentioned we're still dealing with today in places like New York and Boston and and other parts around the world um we we have this this product for lack of better word this thing that that we all <laughs> that we all create it's part of our healthy bodies when we eat it the food digests and then what we don't digest and use has to be put out of our bodies and that has to go somewhere <laughs> Uh, but that's, that stuff can cause other people, can cause us and other people to be sick. What, in, in your research, um, you know, what did, what did Joseph do other than, build, you know, t- taking the, the sores and, 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 uh, uh, you know, where did Joseph direct the poop to go once it wasn't going into the river? Actually, this is very unfortunate. So he did direct it to go back into the river, but um, far from the city. So uh. some people, you know, who, who lived out in that direction, you know, they must have still, you know, had that horrible smell. But at the time, they thought the problem was the smell. They didn't realize that the problem was the mixing of the sewage with the water. Mm-hmm. So initially they um they I, I think it's like I want to say maybe fourteen miles outside the city and the Thames is in Tidal River. So they would they kept the um actually I visited one of these sewage pumping stations that um that Basil Jet created and they're incredible they at the time used what were the biggest beam engines in the world they're operated you know they're these huge steam engines and they um would pump the sewage up so the sewage would come into this huge reservoir underground and then just as the um the tide was going out towards the ocean they would pump it all into the river so that the ocean ideally would take the sewage out, you know, with the tide. Mm-hmm. But actually, um, not long after they got the whole sewer system going, there was a pleasure cruise that was on the river that collided with a barge and it sunk. And a lot of people were killed because they had just released all of the sewage into the river. Mm. And um, so lots of people died. And um, it must have been a horrible death. And shortly after that, they stopped putting the sewage into the river. Well, they, they still put the sewage into the ocean, but they didn't put it directly um, into the river. They took it out on barges and dumped it into the middle of the ocean. And that was legal until the early 90s. Oh, wow. Which is hard to believe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at, at, a certain, at a certain point, they started, um, you know, uh, treating the sewage before they would take it out. But I was really surprised to learn that that was, um, that that was legal until the 90s. Yeah. So how are we dealing with our poop problems today um are you know that we're, we're still creating poop and there's even more people <laughs> around than before i mean you're in new york city there are millions of people living in new york city pooping um what happens <laughs> what happens to the poop today um it's actually really amazing some of the things that they're doing today 
Um, one thing that I discovered is that the methane that's created from the solid waste is often used to create power. So lots of wastewater treatment plants are actually powered by the methane created by the um, solid waste. None of this is in my book, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's all just stuff that I learned when I was doing the research because I visited a couple um, wastewater treatment plants, which are actually fascinating and are generally open to the public. Or it sounds like it would not be a very fun um, way to spend an afternoon, but it was really cool. Well, yeah, you know, I think... As I mean, as kids are growing and, you know, as we're sitting down reading a book like this with our kids, one of the things I think we can we we can talk to our kids about is just, you know, there are problems in the world. And as, as you said, the problem that Joseph and London faced, you know, a hundred or so years ago, we're still facing and we still need to come up with uh, different solutions to this. And and what an amazing thing that somebody figured out a way, oh, we, we need to treat this poop and we need machines to do it and we're going to need power yeah. to run the machines. And, hey, we can use the stink that's coming off the poop to run the machines to clean the poop. <laughs> I know. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So this would be a great way to talk uh, to our kids about the STEM fields and about using our creativity and imagination to, to solve problems. One of the things that you brought up that I think would be a great thing to talk to our kids about is, you know, Joseph's first solution was just to, you know, push the problem down the river a bit, you know, and get, get, mm-hmm. get the, yeah. you know, get it away from London proper, but you're still putting the poop into the water downstream so that it's not hurting as many people. And I think that we're doing that today in the way that we're um, disposing of our, our plastics and uh, trash mm-hmm. and, and even our clothes. I was just reading an article today that, that you know, people buy so much clothes that people in countries like Ghana are suffering from it because, uh, you know, well-meaning people in the United States, they finish using a, a, a shirts or a dress and they say, well, let me donate this to people in Ghana. But there's so many clothes being sent over there that the people can't use it. So they have to put it in landfills and they don't have the room for it. So, you know, right. yeah. we, we can't we can't solve our problems by put it on, putting it on to somebody else. Yes, yes. Or on to future generations. Yeah, yeah. What was it that inspired you to write about Joseph and this story? <laughs> Um, it was the name, The Great Stink. I mean, that was what first piqued my attention. I was reading a book about life in Victorian uh, England. It was called How to Be a Victorian by Ruth Goodman. And there was just a very short paragraph about The Great Stink. It hardly said anything about it. And I thought, wow, I've never heard of that. What the heck is it? And so I Googled it. And as soon as I learned that it was about water pollution and caused by poop, I knew that kids would be interested in mm-hmm. this story. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I did a little more research. It just so happened that um, my husband was working in London at the time. So I was I was about to spend a couple months in London. And so I was able to go and visit that pumping station. And, you know, I... Um, the sea, I got to see the office, not not the inside, but, you know, the building where Joseph Bazalgette worked and drew up his plans. And it was just, it was, it was really cool timing. And I just felt like the story would be something that both kids and adults would like because, you know, for the kids, there's a poop factor. And mm-hmm. for adults, there's history, engineering, you know, environmentalism. So it seems to tick a lot of boxes. Yeah, yeah. You know, the one thing, Colleen, as I'm uh, learning more about history and learning more about, you know, different periods in history, the expression, uh, the good old days, they, they, weren't, all, <laughs> they weren't that good. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Uh, you know, I can't imagine yeah. <laughs> walk, walking down, you know, walking along the beautiful T- Thames River and smelling all that poop. 
I know, I know. In fact, when I watch movies now that are set in the Victorian era, all I, I'm noticing, like, wow, those sidewalks look way too clean. They would not be that clean, you know. Like, where's all the, the horse poop? Where's all the, you know, the buckets of pee that are people are dumping out their windows <laughs> into mm-hmm. the street, you know? <laughs> You know, one of the things I, I want to ask you before we say goodbye is what can we do today to help uh, conserve our water and to keep our water clean? It's, we, we can't choose to stop pooping. You know, that's, that we no. have to do that. <laughs> but what, what kind of things yeah. can we do? Well, one of the best things we can do is to try to work to make our cities more, um, I guess, more absorbent. There are a lot of cities who are trying to become green cities. Philadelphia has started doing it. And there are a few cities in China that are doing it. And um, I think Seattle has a program um, that's called, oh, it's a number, 50,000 rain gardens or 100,000 rain gardens, um, where, you know, there's things that we can do. We can build rain gardens that uh, collect water and allow it to go down into the soil and to, into the roots and plants instead of having it go onto the cement and then end up in the these combined sewers or end up in the waterways where, it, you know, there's a chance it's going to bring raw sewage into our waterways. We can, there's um, certain types of uh, cement now or paving materials that allow for rainwater to go through the material and down into the soil. We can um, build uh, green roofs like the um, oh, the Ford factory, I think, in Detroit has like one of the largest green roofs in the country. Um, these are all, all things, that, anything we can do to keep the water from getting into the um, the sewer systems and into the waterways is helpful. Because even if it's just running on the street, it's picking up, you know, whatever pollution people have left in the streets. It's picking up, you know, poop from our dogs, maybe, or our animals. So, you know, there's lots of things that we can do. And, and actually just talking about the sewage problem and the need for sewage infrastructure is a big thing too. They've got a couple bills right now um, that are in, uh, I think, I'm not sure if they've passed or not, but I I know one of them is part of that big, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a a big bill that um, Congress and the Senate are talking about right now. And it it has a, a lot of money for sewage and water infrastructure. Uh-huh. So, you know, things like that could yeah. definitely help. You know, one of the things that I'm excited about is that there is a uh, parent out there listening to this today, and there's a really good chance that their child will be the person that comes up with the solution to help us move even more forward in terms of protecting our waterways. Wouldn't that be amazing? That would be yes. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Colleen, I know people are going to want to know where they can go to learn more about the Great Stink and also more about you. Yeah, so it's available in, you know, any bookstore. Um, if your library doesn't have it, you can ask them to order it. Um, but I know it's available in some libraries. You can get it on Amazon, independent bookstores. You can get more information about the book or about me on my website. It's www.colleenpath.com, C-O-L-L-E-E-N-P-A-E-F-F. And um, I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at Colleen Bass. Awesome. We've had a really interesting time speaking to the author of The Great (laughs) Stink, How Joseph Bazojet Solved London's Poop Pollution Problem. Our guest has been Colleen Path. Hey, Colleen, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest would be Betsy Byrd. Betsy will be returning to the show to celebrate her middle grade novel. It's called A Long Road to the Circus. It's a really fun interview. You don't want to miss it. That's the next episode of the podcast. If you are the author of a fantastic children's book, we want to really encourage you to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on 
the authors click here button at the top of the page and you can find out all about the many author services. We can have you as a guest on the podcast. You can submit your book to our Certified Great Read panel. And we can also let you know about our promotional program. This is a really fun program that will celebrate your book via commercials on the podcast, blast to our 50,000 plus social media followers, and put your book's message on pedestrian billboards on a nationwide network of pedestrian billboards. Check it out today. Go to readingwithyourkids.com. Click on that author's click here button at the top of the page. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to start by thanking our guest, Colleen Path. Please be sure to check out The Great Stink, how Joseph Bowser Jet solved London's poop pollution problem. I also want to thank my team, Alejandro Dorothy, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Michael Murphy. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.